Welcome back everyone, I have always wondered what the inside of one of those gas mask filters looked like. Therefore we are going to disassemble this completely used up gas mask filter today and we are also going to try if you can detect the bromine that's stuck in this filter. So let's start. Normally I would cut this open but I want to know if there was some kind of glue beneath this flanged aluminium. Therefore we are going to use the screwdriver to open it up. Now that we worked our way around that with the screwdriver and it worked way easier than I thought, we can try to take off that cap by simply pulling it off, but this seems to be quite hard, so the screwdriver has to go in again. I actually might tear that one here open, just rip that thing off. As I predicted, there was indeed some kind of clue under here that prevented us from just ripping off that big aluminium cap. For this reason I'm simply going to work my way around with this pair of pliers. Oh man, this will probably be harder than I thought because we actually have the second layer of glue right here if you look closely. Looks like it's it looks like silicon, but silicon would be hard and not as sticky like this. Oh, there you go. We are not going to remove that completely because you will already be able to see everything beneath it. It's interesting that it seems that this filter is coated entirely in copper on the inside. If you look here, you will be able to see a really thin layer of copper and this layer is way thicker. This layer was probably as thick as this copper layer before, but because this filter was used as a bromine gas scrubber, can still see the red color of the bromine inside of this PVC hose which I attached to this. The bromine vapors, a really high concentration, probably reacted with some of the copper turning it clearer and turning it into basically copper bromide which is only a salt. And here you can see the particle filter. This filter is made up of two parts, probably a particle filter and also a gas filter and it looks like some cellulose and all of these things are packed pretty closely together and the reason for that is basically maximizing the surface area so that you can breathe more easily while wearing that mask. Let's take off that part this is glued to here. Ah. You can see the entire inside of the cap. And this is the entire particle filter. Looks interesting. Now for the second part. The separation layer. Beneath that there will be the gas filter and I'll have to think about how we can remove it. I hope I'll be able to remove it using just a screwdriver. This aluminium separation layer was simply bent and now we will be able to remove it. Uh, and some probably activated charcoal, definitely activated charcoal because activated charcoal adsorbs most toxic gases. Beneath that there's only activated charcoal. Actually it's pretty large chunks of activated charcoal. I'd have thought that it's more of a really powder, powdered form. 
let's pour that activated charcoal into another bag and see what's if there's anything more inside of this filter. It's quite a lot of charcoal. And there's some off-white powder on the wall. See that? This definitely is not activated charcoal and I have no idea what that is. But now that this filter is open, you can see that there's another layer of filter paper beneath it and the reason that filter paper is there is that you don't breathe in the charcoal. Here you have that. Oh, it's actually is paper. It's some sort of cloth. I don't know how to call it. And it's pretty durable. Let's rip it out. Anything beneath it? Yeah. A nice copper colored aluminium layer. And you can also see through the back hole. And there you have it. That's inside of a gas mask filter. Now we are going to try if you can detect some bromine that has been adsorbed into this activated carbon or activated charcoal. We probably won't be able to see any bromine wafers, but we are going to use some potassium iodide starch paper to detect bromine wafers. To get the bromine out of this activated charcoal, we are going to simply heat it up. I don't know if this works, but we have to try. Some slightly wet potassium iodide starch paper was placed on the inside of the test tube. It is important that the potassium iodide starch paper is slightly wet. Now we are simply going to heat up the charcoal and see if anything changes. Yeah, right now, oh, yeah. You see, look closely, the potassium iodide starch paper takes on purple color, you can't see it from the back side, you have to look here, it turned brown. That means that there's bromine vapors in there. This charcoal has of course also been used for chlorine, sulfur dioxide and ammonia, but predominantly there will be bromine contained in it because it was used as a gas scrubber for bromine. Let's see if we can make any physical bromine vapors visible. No, sadly, you will not be able to see any bromine vapors. Well, this was it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to drop me a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more chemistry content in the future. I wish all of you a nice day. Until next time. Bye. By the way, the iodide starch paper just turned blue on the back side.